People love him already. He's got the uh, Rhode Island twang. The long pass to Moore and a pin block from Martin. Tune in to Cam's corner. <laughs> He's going to make it here. Draws the foul for another Rhode Island in one. I can't his own podcast. It's good off the backboard and in. Trying to break. And we are back, guys. Welcome back to another episode of Cam's Corner, Season 3, Episode 11. Episode 79 overall on the way to 100, so thank you guys for all the support. Keep running that up. We're almost to our milestone of 100, but Rody Nation today, this guest needs no introduction at all. Quarterback Kasim Hill for the URI football team. Kasim, thanks so much for joining me. You guys just had a bye week. I know you guys have been super busy, but thanks for joining me. Thank you for having me on. For sure, man. It's been a long awaited. Of, I've wanted to have you on for a minute. Um, I think this is the perfect, uh, I guess, outro to your season, to your last season as a quarterback at the collegiate level. Um, so we're going to highlight everything from your career. Um, I know there's been a ton of accolades, so it's gonna, we'd be here all day if we were talking about every single one of them. But um, to start off, where are you from and where did that passion for the sport of football spark from at a young age? Uh, so I was born in Delaware, grew up in the DMV area, D.C., Maryland, Virginia area. Um, the passion for the game came from my dad. So he played at Columbia in New York, Ivy League. In college and you know ever since I was like two years old I just loved the game I was like it's, I need to go do this and so ever since I was a little kid I've had it from him yeah so obviously um it's tough to get into that quarterback role as a young kid but once you get into it I feel like no one really ever leaves it you know I've had yeah. I've had uh, teammates that have had a, have had to leave that position but mostly it's it's I've seen you've, you've been a quarterback like your whole life and you continue to do, do that for the rest of your career so I guess when did that um position when did you know that you wanted to be a quarterback and how did that kind of position transfer like you know for the rest of your career it's kind of crazy I didn't really want to play quarterback really I played running back uh until I was eight and then my best friend growing up his dad we were in pre-practice one day he was like you can kind of throw I think we should put you at quarterback for the day and then ever since that day I realized I could have control of everybody tell everybody what to do boss them around kind of stuck yeah how old were you in eight eight yeah so from eight from the year eight just now, until now, yeah. yeah. Wow, you think about it, it's almost two decades. That's yeah, pretty crazy. Much. <laughs> <laughs> but so I guess growing up, yeah. So at a young age, you're, you start as a quarterback. Who are some of like the NFL role models you looked at and kind of implemented your game around? Uh, I love Aaron Rodgers growing up. I mean, before Patrick Mahomes came along, he's the most gifted person I've ever seen throw a football. So growing up, I wanted to do everything like him. And then a real old school reference, I was a big Warren Moon fan growing okay. up. Mm-hmm. Loved watching his tape. My dad used to put him on all the time. So Warren Moon and Aaron Rodgers is yeah. where the inspiration comes from. Did you have any role models like outside the NFL, like, a, like family members or, or siblings or anything like that? Oh, yeah. My little sister, she's easily the biggest inspiration in my life. You know, she was born with Down syndrome and some other health challenges when she was uh, born. I was, around the same time, I started playing quarterback. And, you know, just the way she overcame those taught me a lot about life, taught me a lot about myself and how to handle adversity. So she's easily, outside of football, the biggest inspiration I've had. Does she come to a lot of games? Oh, yeah, pretty much everyone. Mm. We call her the boss. You can usually hear her. Yeah. I can always hear her on really? the field. Yeah. Is she like, like front row or all the way at the top? Yeah, she sits in the front row. Yeah. Screaming her her little ears off. Right near the her bench. Mouth off. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. And in high school, again, uh, we talked about it a little bit before. Mm-hmm. Um, like from where you're from and everything like that. But, you know, at the end of the, your career, you know, ESPN 300, you know, top high school prospects in the country, if, for those who don't know. Gatorade Player of the Year, you know, that's, again, a ton of accolades and accomplishments throughout high school. And again, the collegiate level, which we'll get to, but. Um, when did you see your game really take uh, like a, a leap and you realize that, you know, you're one of the best players in the country at the high school level and, you know, all these colleges are probably looking at you. When did you see your game really take that leap and you're like, okay, I can play at the next level? You know, I think the the biggest adjustment for me was in middle school and stuff, I'd always be around like the high school guys and like mm-hmm. training and playing, trying to play against them. Um, when I got to like my sophomore year and like I started becoming the older guy kind of, it started to like, like settle into my brain like okay like this is really like your dreams are like really starting to come true I would say around then when I started to realize I wasn't the young guy anymore and what were the like the schools like looking at you at that time because obviously there's probably like a ton of division one yeah. schools but uh around that time was like Penn State Michigan Michigan State Syracuse Maryland Ohio State a bunch of Big Ten mm-hmm. ACC schools I would say did you meet with any of them prior to making a decision or was it yeah. kind of just all of, I think I visited 
I think I visited uh, every school I got an offer from. Mm. Or really close. Utah might have been the only one I never made it out to, yeah. unfortunately. But Maryland was the one that you, you yeah. stuck with to, to go to first. And mm-hmm. just talk about, I guess, that decision and the process behind that, too. Because like you yeah. said, there was a ton of big, bigger schools, yeah. but Maryland was the one you chose. So I, once we moved to the D.C. area, I was 25 minutes from Maryland's campus. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like I was talking about my, uh, my sister, me and her are real close, real close to my parents. So I was like, I don't really want to go that far from home. I know I can come in and compete to play right away, so I was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna stay home." Yeah. So that was really—it was really like your family. You wanted yeah. to stay close to your family. And had to stay close to the fam. What was the? Uh, I guess like one the environment there, the culture there, mm-hmm. um, and just like the support staff that you had with the coaching and things mm-hmm. like that. Like, what was the system like there your first year? Um, when I first got there, it was the second year of the head coach being there, or like that coaching staff being there. So we were like their first recruiting class mm-hmm. that they really had like a full year to go out and recruit. So, you know, they kind of looked out for us a little bit. The culture was in the process of trying to be changed and all that. So, but, I mean, the guys that I came in with, I, I, I'll always have love for those guys to this mm-hmm. day. So we, we had some good times at Maryland. For I sure. That. And, yeah, you appeared in, in three games there, all solid performances, of course, and before sustaining an injury, I mean, just kind of talk about that alone. Like, um, but before the injury, just like your role on the team and how you felt that you were a leader to everybody there, like just your first year in. My first year when I first got there, I just wanted, you know, all the older guys to know that I was really coming in about business. Like, I wanted to come in there and show them in summer workouts. Like, I'm going to work my butt off. I'm going to learn everything. Like, I'm going to be this even killed freshman that, like, if I get thrown in, nothing's really going to change with me. And then – when I first got thrown in my first game, I was like, I was just so excited. Like, you're playing at Texas and three-point game in the fourth quarter. Like, those are the moments you dreamed of when you were a little kid. Like, that environment with, you know, this group of people. Um, but, yeah, it was fun. I mean, think about those moments as a little kid of playing college football and starting a college football game, running out the tunnel with the fire and mm. the fans and all that stuff. But, I mean, it was great. For sure. I mean, again, like I said, that first year only appeared in eight games, but then the next year coming back, again, another tough injury, but 10 games right there, all Mm -hmm. solid performances as well. Um, Attempted 84 passes to start the year without an interception, which was the longest since 2010. So, again, those accolades, that narrative is going to continue throughout the entire (laughs) of the interview. But, um, again, obviously, like that, like injuries is is frustrating alone, Mm -hmm. but um, obviously that kind of set you back and um, the following year, end up going to Tennessee, weren't able to play because of the transfer, but the injuries obviously are still are still lingering. So kind of just talk about your mindset and how you fight through those injuries in order to just continue to get better. Yeah, I mean, after I had the first one, ACL, MCL, meniscus, right knee, um, just rehabbing back from that taught me a lot about myself. Like, that's a – it's a tough rehab process mentally, I would say. I mean, physically it's going to be what it is, but mentally just keeping that faith in yourself and then – coming back and doing it the same thing the next year honestly I lost faith in myself a little bit but that same thing come back to my sister like I watched her from zero months old to six months old fight literally for her life so I mean what what's a knee injury when it's compared to that you know what I'm saying like it's just a little bit of adversity to overcome and just attacking every day and my family shout out to the fam once again just keeping me up through that whole process I mean Without them, I definitely wouldn't have made it through. Mm. So she, well, your family as a whole, but your yeah. sister's really the backbone of how oh, you yeah. kind of continue to keep going. 100%. Yeah, that's awesome. And I'm, that's awesome that she's at every game, despite, yeah. you know, how being far from home a little yeah. bit. And that's great. And now I got to look out for her. I don't know how I haven't seen her yet, but I got to look out for her for sure. <laughs> just just listen for somebody screaming my name. It'll be her. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And I'm on the sidelines too, so I got I to gotta look up and, and peep that for sure. Um, but, again, your first year at URI, the COVID season, mm-hmm. um, and obviously that that was a tough season for everybody, but yeah. um, not a lot of games played. But how did I guess you or I get on your radar? So you know, obviously Tennessee didn't work out. There was mm-hmm. um, you weren't able to play regardless because yeah. of the transfer. But and then COVID. Yeah, yeah. Just talk about like the, how how they got on your radar and how you kind of uh, you know gravitated towards you or I. Honestly, my whole thought process leaving Tennessee was so I went to high school with Ed Lee. Right. We both went to St. John's. And I was I hit him up one day. I was like, you know, Ed, I just want to come play with you. Mm. And that's kind of how it all happened. I was like, you think it would be a good idea if I came up there? He was like, yeah. So then I came. Didn't it was, take so a, it was just Ed. Yeah, I didn't take a visit or anything. I talked to Coach Murph 
uh, maybe once or twice on the phone, and it was just like, all right, I'm coming. Yeah, talk about your relationship with him too, because yeah. obviously Ed Lee was a huge part of of the Rams yeah. uh, organization and everything. Just talk about what how you guys uh, have bonded throughout high school mm-hmm. one, and now that led to your decision that you were right. Yeah, I obviously I can't stand Ed Lee, <laughs> so I can't wait till he sees us. Nah, Ed's my guy. We've known each other since about seventh, eighth grade, a long time. But, you know, just one of those people in your life that you keep around because they're genuine and, you know, they show real love and real care for people. Mm-hmm. And I think Ed embodies that. Everybody in here feels that for sure, and I definitely do. But, yeah, that's my dog. Yeah. For always will be. You talk to him on a day-to-day basis, Yeah, right? yeah. pretty much every day. Yeah, he's the man. He's, yeah. He did a lot, obviously, for the program, but, yeah. um, you know, he's putting in work. Um, I was going to ask this a little bit later, but mm-hmm. I kind of I feel like it's more fitting now yeah. um, to see him. And, you know, obviously all your, your past teammates that you've, you've played with and things like that play at that next level, mm-hmm. play in the NFL. Um, obviously, again, like you said, still keeping in contact. How much does that inspire you and, and motivate you to bring your game? Because you obviously can make it, but just, yeah. how much does it motivate you just to see them, people that you were, like, super close with at this level? Oh, it's a lot of motivation. It makes the dream realistic. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you always – as. You know, everybody wants to play in the NFL, but once you see people actually go and do it, it's like, okay, I can really go and do this, yeah. especially when they're close to you. So it's cool. I'm happy all those guys, they're reaching their dreams, making money off their dreams, which is awesome. So mm. definitely provide some motivation. And they're doing their thing. And I know yeah. um, uh, Henry Yanakopoulos, who was yeah. who was a player here as well, he's now a coach. Yeah. So did you ever think of or have you ever – does that ever cross your mind of, like, maybe, oh, one day I could be a coach like Henry or, or something like that? I don't think I could do the coach route. Maybe. I have thought about it. Yeah. I think I would be more on the, like, scout GM side mm. than the coaching side for me. Yeah. I would, I like being in control of everything. Mm. Obviously, playing is on your mind. That's that's yeah. the priority right now, and <laughs> it's definitely going to continue to happen. This year still um, underway. Last home game coming up soon. Mm. But um, going back to your first memory of URI, your first uh, career game here, your debut overall versus um, – Number six, Villanova. Obviously, um, you know, they were a great team at that point. Mm-hmm. But, you know, scoring your first touchdown here, a game-winning touchdown, just talk yeah. about that game in general and, and how you felt that you could continue to be a leader based on your past experiences here now at URI. That game was awesome. That's probably one. It's easily top three. It might be my favorite game in my career at Rhodey. Um, it was just all of our first times playing together, and mm-hmm. it was just awesome because, you know, the core that had been here, they all know how they play with each other, but we had a lot of new pieces, and it was just like – it was cool to see all of us come together as a team, and we were down 10 points, five minutes left in the fourth quarter. It was just awesome, the resilience we showed as a team. And, you know, it gave me a lot of faith back in myself, just being able to go back out there and play. And ever since that game, this group has just expanded on that. And I, it's awesome. Yeah, and going off that too, just the last few seasons alone, I mean – um, the numbers speak for itself, obviously, 2,000 yards like, per year um, after that, 15 touchdowns each year as well. Um, like I said, those numbers, they, they speak for itself, and you can tell that obviously you're, you're one of the greatest players in this, in this program, of course. And, um, just like your collegiate career overall, you know what I mean? Like uh, going off of like the fit, as we talked about earlier, like the fit in the, in the roster and the fit in the organization and um, how you fit with the guys, your teammates, mm-hmm. the coaching staff. Just talk about how much you've seen – in a change in that from the previous schools you were at. So how everything kind of ties in together, culture, support staff, teammates, how much has that changed and how much has that changed in the right direction for you um, after transferring here? Yeah, I think, you know, personally for me, it's easily the best family culture that I've been around. Mm -hmm. Like everybody in this locker room would really do anything for each other. Same thing with the coaches upstairs, which I think is always, like that's what you look for as a high school kid coming Mm -hmm. out trying to go to a school, like a place that really cares about you as a person first and then as your athlete second. Um, and I think that's just developed even more and more with guys like Jake Fire and Henry Yannakopoulos and Ed Lee and just guys that have been here for a long time and just all the blood, sweat, and tears that they put into this program. And, you know, I hope it, it will continue after, you know, my senior class leaves and – you know, I just can't wait to come back in like 20 years and just see yeah. how it all looks. Like I'm excited for that moment, and I'm excited for what Rhodey has going in the future. For sure, and um, for someone like, like you said, your last year, uh, your whole senior class, you guys are going to be leaving after this year. Um, 
if you are landed on an NFL roster, how will you bring that culture and that family mm-hmm. mindset from here to like an NFL team? Even though being like a rookie, you're like your first year in, how are you going to bring all of that and kind of make a difference on whatever team you're on? Yeah, I think the most important thing is just showing people that you're honest, you're real, and that you care. Like when you generally care for people or like you try and help them in any way that you can help them, whether it's talking about something that really matters to them or, you know, going out of your way to, to do something for them. When you show people you care, it goes a long way. And that's how you start to, you know, form that brotherhood and that love and that trust. And that's what I would try and do. For sure. And, and for me, only being here for two years, transferring mm-hmm. in, like I told you, as a, as a junior, I mean, I saw that right from the jump. Mm-hmm. And uh, one of my first things that I did as a broadcaster was cover you guys on the sideline. It wasn't right. it wasn't for the team, but it was for the cigar. So All shout right. out to the cigar. But shout and now, out to the cigar. Yeah. Now I'm the I'm the digital correspondent for you guys, and it's more of like a, a little bit more of an inside look. Right. Now that I get to talk to you guys, to you and um, all the players that I have been talking to, I mean, the guys ran me through a, a weight room <laughs> session. So, you know, I've, I've been getting a lot of, like, close with you guys, and it, right. it's cool to kind of be a part of that, that family aspect. And um, when you look back at it in your first year, um, did you ever feel, like, pressured in a way? Because obviously you performed at such a high level your first game in. So right. after that, you know, what's, what's the jitters like? What's the mindset like going after that? Like, did you feel pressured at all after that? I don't think so. I think, you know – going off of the culture and the team and the brotherhood that we have. Nobody really cares who makes the plays. As long as they get mm. made and we find ways to win, like, I'd rather take a – I would say it a lot. I'd rather take a win than throw for 303 touchdowns. Like, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily be the happiest person in the world if I threw for zero yards and we won, but yeah. I would be happy that we won. Mm-hmm. And, again, going along, like, what we talked about with injuries, um, it seems like you've been able to fight – through injuries at, a, like, um, I guess a better pace here. Mm-hmm. You know, obviously it was tough at uh, the last two schools you were at. Um, but here I feel like um, they've only made you better, you know, the last yeah. two seasons, throwing for over 2,000 yards and, and each season, which is, is incredible. But that the fight with injury, you talk about um, your sister being kind of the backbone of how she motivates you to just obviously do anything. But um, just talk about the coaching staff, the support staff that you have that has been able to help you push through the injuries and really – be at the top of your game each season oh yeah easily my sister and my family I mean help with everything whether it's just showing support where like coming to every single game family lives in Atlanta now so for them Mm. to come to every single game always means a lot to me and just to you know we keep that same like it doesn't feel like they're 16 hours away all the time yeah you know and the coaching staff here you know they've been a family to me Coach Murph, me and Murph talk like every day pretty much, even on the weekends, whether he may not want to hear from me or I may not want to hear from him. Uh, you know, it's going to be weird not having those same kind of people around. But I know we've built something good, and I know those relationships with the people in this locker room and the coaching staff and the trainers, and everybody's just going to last past my t- uh, time here. Yeah, and obviously those coaches have been with you since day one. Mm-hmm. So – um, along th- those lines, I guess, just run me through your most memorable moment in your entire Rams career. I mean, there's probably a ton of them, <laughs> but something that sticks to you, you know, like right now makes you laugh that you think of uh, when you think of your most memorable moment here. I would say one of my most memorable moments, it's not even on the field. Hmm. We, oh, man, what year? I think it was 2021 fall camp. Or I got two moments for it. Yeah. 2021 fall camp where, you know, I mean, people would probably lie to you out there, but fall, <laughs> nobody likes fall camp. Yeah. Especially once you get older, you do not like fall camp. But we had we got like a lightning, something, it rained out, and we're all in here. We all have our pads on. We're all in the locker room in here. And Flem just walks in with like the most like stern <laughs> look on his face. And we think he's about it. Like he's definitely mad about something. Like we did something mm. right. And he just comes in. And we all just joke around in here when we're supposed to be having practice for like an hour during camp. And I just remember that moment, like the whole coaching staff is in the locker room with us joking around and we have a game in two weeks. Mm. Like, it's just like little moments like that. Or I'm, so I live in Atlanta now, right? <laughs> so this is my first semester here, fall 2020. And I remember looking outside, I'm like, oh, it's a snowstorm outside. Like, mm. There's no way I'm leaving the room today, right? So I get the text from the coaches. We have practice still. I'm like, oh, great. I don't have a winter jacket. I don't have boots. I don't have anything. So I come over here, and it's literally like 
It's probably it snows like this high off the ground. I'm like, okay, I'm not used to this. I've never thrown a football in snow, never ran in snow, anything. <laughs> we go out there, and Flynn is training like a normal practice, and there's a, a snow plow on half the field. So we're practice on like this 50 yards while he's plowing the other side, and then we're flipped like back and forth like every 15 minutes. I was like, this has to be like only a Rhode Island thing. Like, mm. I've never experienced. Did that turn like you this. off in any sense? Like, ah, oh, man, I can't be, I can't be playing here in the snow. It's like these people are nuts. There's no <laughs> way we're playing in the snow. It's freezing out here. Yeah, I can't do this. But no, I just like any time. Most memorable moments to me, to me, are like just any time we're all joking around, and just being like ourselves, just mm. having a good time, enjoying like the stupid stuff, like mm. stuff you won't even think about in like ten years. But when you do think back to those moments, be like. Wow. Like, yeah, and there's so many. Yeah. yeah, there's so many. And, and then, like you said, like when you look back 10 years, there'll be like a little instance in your life where you're like, oh, I remember this. Yeah. I remember that. You know, little things that will remind you of that. Um, and, of course, you know, Coach Flem having to be the guy that he is, the leader yeah. of this team that he is, <laughs> he's got to shut stuff down at, at points. But um, I guess kind of talk a little bit about him, how he's been a mentor to you your yeah. first year coming in and, and how much he's helped you grow as a human and yeah. a player as well. Coach Flem, that's my guy. You know, that's a head coach where you can look at him square in his eyes and know that he truly truly cares about you and loves you and you know like I was saying before anytime you're looking for a program especially to get that from a head coach means the world and over the last three and a half four years like our relationship has grown so much like I, we understand each other very well and that's my guy I'm always messing with him at practice calling him little bro I'll just bump into him what's up little bro but I mean just somebody that I know in like five years, hmm. if I would just pick up the phone and call him one day, he'll answer and we'll talk for like two hours. But yeah, yeah, I love that guy. Yeah, I've been able to interview him too. This was last year. Yeah. Um, and again, like, like similar to yourself, obviously he's been coaching for for a really long time, but his resume just speaks for itself. Yeah, it speaks yeah. for itself. There's so many different instances you can't talk about all right. that in a half hour hour long <laughs> podcast. You just can't do it. Um, but you know he's been super great. Like everybody in Rhode Island, like you said, is like a, it's like a family environment. Yeah. Like there's no no one's ever gonna Hollywood you. No one's ever right. gonna be like, you know, too good for that or whatever it is. Right. And um, I can see he's implemented that not only in you but just in, in everybody. And um, and that's great. And going along, um, your most memorable moment. Talk about maybe like a most memorable hardship. You know, something at, at with the Rams that has um, really helped you improve as a player. Um, it could be it could be off the field. It could have been like during a game, like yeah. a loss, like a bad game play. Just something that you think of that you think a hardship yeah. and that you've you've been able to achieve. So easily, my toughest play at Rhode Island was 2021 fall at Elon. We're six and four. We're playing. Uh, so it was pretty much a playing game for the playoffs. Mm. And I just remember we were down, I think, 36 to 17 in the fourth quarter. And we came back and made it 36-28. We had the ball last drive, and I threw a pick to lose the game. And at that, I remember that moment like yesterday. Like that was our chance to get into the playoffs right there. And I think that fueled me for the past two seasons. Just like if I ever get that opportunity again, it's never going to happen. I'm never going to lose a game in that way. And – that and getting cheated at UNH last year. Yeah, all right, that was tough. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I like I told you before before we started. Um, my previous school they didn't have a football team. Yeah. It was a Division three school, so I never was used to covering football. Right, and I got so drawn into to Rhode Island football. Right. I was like, like everybody asked, "Oh, who's your favorite? Do you follow college football?" Yeah, Rhode Island. It's yeah. just Rhode Island. That's all it is. And um, to see that, like, that's like just like a like takes the whole like yes. life out of you watching that. And I'm sure as a player and a coach, yeah. like it's just even obviously even worse, but. Um, has there any been has there been games similar to that where it gets ended in that kind of instance? U N H. Yeah. Uh, for us, I don't think so. Maybe not like as drastic, you know, as yeah. you know, all the things that were on the line for you know the playoffs and, and things following that game. Yeah. If it were to I'm go in your favor, but William and Mary, kind of like that was just last play of the game. We didn't mm -hmm. get the two point, but kind of where it was just like that deflating feeling. Yeah. Yeah. And obviously, with you know. The amount of games played, uh, we, got, we talked about all the accolades and everything that you've been able to accomplish. Um, you know, Golden Helmet Award, and again, in high school, like Gatorade Player of the Year, and there's, there's just so many more. Just what does that, what do those awards mean to you as a player? Because obviously, um, as a leader, your your best interest is in your team. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure that's the answer you're going to give me. Yeah. But um, <laughs> just, I guess, what, what do they mean to you at the end of the day? What does that attest to? You know, it's been kind of crazy. Like, looking, I did start to, like, look back a little bit and, like, just reminisce. 
especially coming into senior day and having the bye week last week, just like it's really my girlfriend made me reminisce on everything and mm. just like start to think about it. It's kind of crazy. Like if I would have known when I was a young kid, like man, you would have accomplished this much. Yeah, I mean, it's exciting to have your name in record books and stuff like that, but it doesn't happen without the team. It doesn't happen without having the best O-line unit in the country mm-hmm. and them giving me all that time or people around me making plays. Like, it doesn't happen without those guys. So I always look at it as, look at it as a team award. Yeah. Because, honestly, at the end of the day, the quarterback's nothing without the other ten around them. So – that's what it is. Yeah, and, and post game, I mean, you see me in, in the post game yeah. rooms, and you're always talking about your teammates, you're always giving them praise, and um, how how they've been able to make you win games. It's not only mm-hmm. you, and and I love that about you as a character because because um, that's gonna get you further mm-hmm. off the field as well. Um, you know, again, like one day for like a position off of the field, like for like a, a, a on camera personality yeah. or whatever it is, like you're always your best interest is everybody else's. You're mm-hmm. always worried about making sure they're in the right state of mind and making sure that everybody's ready to perform. And I, that's that's what a true quarterback should be. And you, you implement that you. tremendously. And um, I, along those same lines of, you know, thinking of memorable moments and everything, we said this is your last year. This mm-hmm. is your final year as yeah. <laughs> as a college athlete. It's been a long run, but a great no, run. No more surprise years coming. <laughs> that's it. Um, but, yeah, just right off with that, um, obviously the media was, was shocked to hear that mm-hmm. you're coming back for another year. Um and I guess some backlash comes with that as well. But mm-hmm. um, for somebody like you and knowing your mindset, obviously that doesn't phase you. The backlash, mm-hmm. the media doesn't phase you at all. But just talk about that decision. Why like why the final year to come uh, for one more year? Yeah, I think, you know, it really came down to me talking with my parents and me talking with Coach Flem, Coach Murph. And I just felt like there were things I could improve on coming back, coming back for another year didn't hurt any of my possible dreams or anything like that and I just felt like the job wasn't finished and wouldn't have felt right to me leaving after last year Mm. and you know the way the season's gone this year the way the season's gone wish we could change a couple of games but it wouldn't have felt right leaving after last year and I'm thousand percent happy that I came back yeah and how how you feeling right now throughout the rest of this how so everything's been you know coming to an end like these past few games just how you feeling like overall in general what's your mindset Feeling pretty good. Feeling very appreciative, nostalgic. Just think about like playing with some of my best friends for the last time. Mm. Like it's kind of crazy. Possible last game in Mead this week, which is I know all the seniors' emotions are gonna be all over the place. But it's kind of crazy to like look back on everything. Yes. Yeah. Take it all in. Hopefully it doesn't hit me all at once because I'll be an emotional wreck. Yeah. Be crying all over the place. <laughs> Well, we'll all we'll all be there, you know, supporting you and everything. And um, obviously, I haven't had the long the tenure that you've had here, but <laughs> it'll potentially be my last game too because yeah. I'll be graduating in May. And um, you know, crazy to see how how far you know you've been able to take this program and how everything's been able to pan out. And obviously, that playoff hope is still there. Yeah. So that's a huge game coming up this Saturday. Mm-hmm. We're gonna be there. Everyone's gonna be there, of course. And um, you know, the, like I said, the culture of of Mead Stadium alone has mm-hmm. has been like almost every game has been, like, packed. And yeah. I feel like... Which is awesome. Yeah. You're, it's prior to you, they didn't have that. Yeah. So it's it's awesome and, and surreal to really see. Um, but along that, what's your message to Rodeo Nation? You know, coming up your last year, um, you're going to be leaving us. So yeah. what's, your, what's your message to Rodeo Nation? Rodeo Nation, I appreciate you guys. You guys took me in far from home, coming off of two schools, two injuries, and you guys showed me love ever since I got here. And I'll always have a spot in my heart for y'all. And this whole state and all the people in it, always big love to Rhodey Nation. And I'm excited to get out there and play in front of y'all at least one more time. Yeah, and to cap everything off, um, last home game of the year coming up, like we said. Um, you're on the FCS National Performer of the Year watch list. Um, obviously, that's something to keep in mind. But the main goal is obviously playoff like push, championship. Advance. you got to get yeah. that done. Um, but I guess, um, you know, what's like I said, the, the mindset of – the home stretch, a mm-hmm. few more games left. Um, how are you preparing your team and how are you preparing yourself just to continue on and, and finish strong? Yeah, I think, you know, everybody's just coming off the bye week, everybody's starting to feel a little bit better body wise mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And I mean, focused on this week, we nobody's losing on senior day. Like just in the nicest way for I, sure possible. Nobody's trying to lose on senior day. And, you know, 
everything that we've built over the past few years and even longer for the guys that have been here longer. Nobody's going to let that happen. Mm. So that's the mindset for this week. Senior week, we took the whole thing. All the seniors making, you know, giving loud little rookie duties, <laughs> stuff like that. But, yeah, nobody's letting that happen for senior day. And then Towson, we owe them one. Mm. We played them a couple years ago, and they dominated us. So everybody's focused, going to be focused for that one when it comes around, too. For sure. And I wish you guys the most luck. wish you the rest of your luck in, in – whatever comes after college. Thank you. Um, you know, happy that you were able to take the time and do this interview. But long behold, the question I ask everybody to cap everything off, what would you think of Camp's Corner? I love it, man. <laughs> I like going on places with cool people. So, hey, I'm happy I got to come on. Thank you for having for me. For sure. On. Anytime, Kasim. And, um, so, again, the Rams have their final home game November 11th, this coming Saturday, whenever you guys are watching this. Um, this is the 79th episode of Camp's Corner on the way to 100. So keep supporting Go check out Kasim and everything he's been able to do because, you know, next year you never know. He's going to probably be, land himself on an NFL roster. And um, like I said, I wish you the best of luck. Uh, tune into everything on Camps Corner, YouTube, Apple, Spotify. We're on everything. It's tough to kind of keep track nowadays. But, um, <laughs> tune in, though. Yes, yes, sir. Is there anything else you want to cap off with? or That's it. Big love. Shout out to Camps Corner. Make sure you all tune in, like he said. And love you, Rodeo. Love. We'll see you guys in the next episode. Yes, sir. Ski. On a break.